gives you a good feeling to have an electric car when gas prices are soaring. Opening up the butterfly doors of his Tesla Model X never gets old for Ron Zarbach. The lifelong Utah decided to buy an electric vehicle five years ago because he wanted to help the environment. It's very inexpensive to operate. There's no maintenance costs except for tires. And more people are following his lead. In July, Consumer Reports found a majority of Americans would buy or are considering getting an electric car. Still, skepticism remains. In a similar survey from the market research firm J.D. Power, nearly a third hesitated because they don't know enough about EVs. I do like the savings as far as the gas mileage, mm -hmm. but I, I definitely would have to learn more about them. Price is another speed bump. More than half of shoppers told Consumer Reports that they were put off by the costs of owning an EV. It's true that electric cars are generally more expensive than gasoline cars. Data from Kelly Blue Book this year puts the average electric car around $63,000. That's $15,000 higher than the auto industry average. And what about fuel ups? The price to charge your EV can run about a third of the cost to fill up on gas each month. But if you're charging at home, you might see a $30 to $60 bump in your energy bill. Plus, 30 states charge hybrid and EV owners a fee to make up for the money they're not paying in gas taxes, which help cover infrastructure costs. Up until this point, if you were driving an EV or a hybrid, to the extent that you are not using gasoline, you are not helping support the system upon which you depend. And while you will have to spend money on gas and charging your oil and filters, EV battery replacement runs anywhere between a couple thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars. Although they only need to be replaced every eight years or 100,000 miles. But last year, the Department of Energy found EVs have lower scheduled maintenance costs than gas cars, a difference of four cents per mile. That may sound small, but one analyst found that could save you over $8,000 during your EV's lifetime. Plus, there are government rebates for owning an EV, although they are limited. You have a tax credit based on which type of vehicle that you buy, uh, at what time. Some of them have run out. For example, the Teslas ran out because they were so oversubscribed. But all the new models coming online uh, have the opportunity to generate a personal tax incentive. Even if more people were able to afford the cars, one third of those surveyed by J.D. Power said they wouldn't have any place to charge at home or at work. The Department of Energy says there are nearly 43,000 charging stations nationwide with around 120,000 individual ports. But they're not spaced out evenly, leading to a phenomenon dubbed range anxiety. Right, we don't get range anxiety with gas because there's a gas station every mile. How many miles can I drive? Do I think about it? Do I have a place to put a charger? How do I charge? Government data shows in some states there are as few as three charging stations for every 100,000 people. And California has nearly the same amount of charging stations as the 39 states with the lowest count combined. Arizona is getting over $76 million in federal dollars to boost charger accessibility. But leaders say it's not as easy as installing more of them. One of the concerns is the cost, also just the availability of the materials to, to install the infrastructure with all the labor and supply chains challenges we're experiencing right now. Americans may also be holding off on EVs because they're more interested in big cars. According to data from Edmunds, a car shopping website, 80% of the top 10 selling vehicles in the U.S. are either trucks or SUVs. EVs are typically smaller, but a recent survey from Recurrent, the world's largest analyst of EV battery health, found pre-sales from some electric trucks and SUVs are passing lifetime sales for older EV models. EV salesmen acknowledge range was limited in the past, but say there are now more makes and models that can fit drivers' needs. It's imperative that we understand what the vehicle that we're driving is used for. There are vehicles out there with 100 miles of range. There are vehicles out there with over 300 or even Lucid with over 500 miles of range. States are now in the driver's seat to find solutions to consumers' biggest concerns. Like in Indiana, where the Department of Transportation is developing the world's first wireless charging highway with magnetic fields embedded in the road. 
or the Electric Highway Initiative, which aims to build the largest corridor of charging stations in the nation between eight western states. When you travel from Salt Lake City to Moab or Boulder or Zion, that you know when you get there, you'll be able to charge that vehicle, keep playing, and then make it home. Hesitation could wane as the government ramps up production efforts. The White House announced this year $7.5 billion of the infrastructure bill will help buy new EV chargers. President Biden also issued an executive order last year calling for half of new cars to be electric or plug-in hybrids by 2030. And popular car brands are plugged into the need, like General Motors, which declared that by 2035, it will only produce electric-powered cars. Jason Bellini, Newsy.